And now it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Hans Herren, who has spoken up a couple times in the questions, but um, deserves a, a more formal presentation here, uh, partly because he won the World Food Prize in 1995 for averting the mealybug crisis in, in Africa's cassava plant. And he is, of course, the president of the Millennium Institute down the street here. But most important, and I want to emphasize this, because it's not sufficiently recognized in this country, and especially in this city. He was part of probably the single most important report we have seen in the field of agriculture in recent years. It's gotten very little attention in the United States. Unfortunately, it does have a bit of a mouthful for the name. It is the International Assessment of Agricultural Knowledge, Science, and Technology. The, that's the formal title, and I think the, the title on, on the cover of the book is Agriculture at a Crossroads. Came out a couple years ago. It was really a revolutionary document, and it is a true shame that it has not gotten the attention here in the United States that it deserves. Uh, as a shorthand, you might think of it as the equivalent to the IPCC reports that are done on climate science. It's that kind of document in agriculture. Hans Herren was one of the co-chairs of that uh, procedure, and he is uh, going to be sharing with us now some of the results there on the general topic of how to avert a food crisis. Hans Herren. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction. I also want to um, express my thanks for uh, have, having been invited here today uh, to talk about a little bit the ISTAD, but also, as we call it, the ISTAD, okay, because it's such a complicated name. Um, and also some, ex some um, ways forward, because we actually know what to do. The question is, why are we not doing it? Um, how does this thing go forward? Is there a gadget? Oh, yeah. I assume it's this one. Oh, maybe I'm pushing the wrong way. Ah, okay. Oh. ah, voila, sorry. Um, so first, I was asked by Mark to just a few words about the, the process itself. I mean, we call it sort of the IPCC for agriculture, yes. What was different, it was it was a fully multi-stakeholder process. We had governments involved, civil society, and among the civil society were the private sector. So we had actually, Big Ag was there too, at least in the beginning, until they had enough of it. Um, we had uh, many group, farmers groups, uh, from around the world, and so it, it, 400 people actually wrote that report, 2,000 pages. 800 people actually helped prepare the questions which we, were asked in the report. So, so it's a huge uh, process which all together took almost eight years uh, to be done. And it was commissioned by the UN organizations at the Joburg Summit in 2002. So that's also important to know, so that it was, has a broad support from six UN agencies and also from the World Bank. So what, what came out after all these years and this hard work? Well, a number of, of uh, um, issues which we actually rediscovered because a lot of these things are actually not new, but I think they were put down on paper in this multi-stakeholder process, which is, again, we said, uh, totally unique. So since we published the, the book, uh, Agriculture at Crossroads, so it is one global report and five sub-global reports, 2,000 pages, uh, with summary for decision makers, which of each the global, uh, sub-global has a summary for decision maker, and also the global one of something less than 20 pages, because we know that these people actually don't know how to read, or don't like to read, so we made it very, very short. Actually, the essence of the recommendations are maybe on four pages or in one single table. So, but that didn't really help much. I uh, also want to mention about what's going on here in the US, Canada and Australia, who did not sign along with uh, 59 other countries actually who, who signed on. But, but here, when the, had people have decided, although they participated, I think almost some, something like 20 uh, uh, members of USDA were authors on the report. That didn't mean that US signed on in it because they didn't like our biotech uh, findings nor the trade issues we, we uh, uh, put forward in this report. All right. So what's the reality? So again, we, we, we have a lot of hungry people in this world. Probably the number is a bit overblown. Actually, there's been a report lately saying that, you know, we're repeating old numbers. Is it really a billion? I mean, not that it matters too much if it's 800 million or a billion, way too many. We should not have anyone hungry actually in this world if we want to do the right thing. 
Uh, never mind the obese, we heard about this, and the diabetes issues, which is growing uh, uh, exponentially, which will probably kill many of the economies around the world. Energy system, we heard a bit, so we have a sort of a social issue, we have energy problems, we have the climate change issue also, which we already way back 2008 mentioned, uh, that we need to change the system, we cannot continue on like this that the natural resources are being overused, the soils are getting lost, uh, the water is being overused, and that basically we are losing a lot of, of jobs, replacing people with machine and oil, um, with, and it just adds to the cost. So basically we heard this this morning, most uh, of it, and what we came down with in the end is business as usual is not an option. We need a change in paradigm in agriculture in order to move forward. And, and although we know this, Although we even know the solutions, what's coming up? We heard it this morning by uh, uh, Nina Fedorov, and she's been one of them going out there saying, oh, we need biotechnology. So the, the narrow move forward, rather than the broad uh, uh, way forward, as we all know, is the one that's going to work. So the right the move forward is a fundamental shift in agricultural knowledge as a technology. That's very important. And also the policies which go with it. Again, we heard it. You know, if we don't change policy, we're not going to go change anything. So we have to, the whole issue about subsidies, for example, which amount to more than one billion a day. So we say, well, we need some money to do things, but just take it from there. More than 380 billion every day are spent on subsidies to actually do the wrong thing, if anything. Uh, we need more capacity development. We heard the two. Um, to do two things differently is, uh, takes um, a lot of knowledge. It's easy to throw a bag of fertilizer out there and a few seeds on it, and then we'll just wait until the, it rains. To do things in a, in, a, in a very ecological way, in a sustainable way, will take more education. So we need this transition. So we need to transition agriculture uh, to sustainable, to ecological, organic. I mean, there's a number of choices out there uh, we, can, we can choose from, but it has to be in tune, in harmony with the system. It has to be ecologically based. So what we, you know, people say, oh, we need sustainable intensification. I think what we need is an ecological intensification, if anything. Uh, we need an agriculture which is multifunctional because agriculture doesn't only grow food. We heard it also this morning. I think we, we do more than just grow food on farms. We make sure the water is there, the clean water for the cities. We make sure there's also air for people to breathe. Uh, for example, we maintain the biodiversity. We provide jobs. And we could probably have a whole lot more jobs if we do things right. So again, I think we need to, to, to move forward. Um, and the other one, the last point, again, the systemic and the holistic approach. Things are connected in the system, and we cannot continue to ignore all the connections uh, in the system. And uh, I don't want you to read the details, but, but what we do, we, uh, basically also at the Millennium Institute, we try to get people to think in system. So what you do something today here, it may have an impact 20 years somewhere else. We see it now with climate change. But still, people cannot imagine it. So actually, science has given us tools for that too. So system thinking is possible using modeling tools, which again should be applied at government level, at research level, but they are not really done, it's not really done so. So that's one thing which is needed. And agriculture is especially is very complex. It touches on so many different uh, um, uh, points way beyond actually the, the, what's even on this uh, uh, graph here. So I think thinking in system, I think, is important if we want resilience, because resilience is the long-term uh, uh, result of actually having a system or systemic thinking. So this, we did this transition. So we have to go from the, the high productivity, or I say sort of high yield at least here, uh, um, over and then low sustainability to, to sustainable and again productive system, multifunctional systems. Now we heard, is there a depression when you go across or not? Well, it depends where you start. In most places you go straight up. In some places where we have overdone it with fertilizer, everything else, it may take a year or two to actually move across. And that would be a good use for subsidies, for example, to be reallocated to the transition. And again, everything we have to do here, uh, more pre-harvest uh, losses, for example, uh, better agronomy, all this, is knowledge intensive, and it has to be put into the system to move it up. And we'll show you a few examples. Now, the discussion always goes, well, organic cannot feed the world. Actually, there's an article in the Swiss newspaper uh, a few months ago 
where uh, Professor Federoff says that it is dangerous to go organic agriculture, to do organic agriculture, because people will go hungry. Um, the problem is, we have a billion hungry people today. With what systems? So maybe that's the question we should ask. And so what do we need to change? So we need to change the present industrial system as well as also the traditional system. We have to work on both ends because both are actually not sustainable and we know what to do to transform both into the new path of sustainability we need to go to. So I think, again, I think we have to be very careful here uh, to, to come forward with more facts. Now the question is how many more do we need to actually convince the policymakers uh, that Monsanto is wrong and that maybe Rodel is right. Now, uh, example, so the Casa Milleberg is, is, uh, is getting a bit of an old example, but it shows what you can do if you do things right. And why? If this problem would be there today, let, um, let me do push this down a bit. Um, this is the cassava belt in Africa. Cassava is uh, tapioca, as you know it here. It comes actually originally from, from Latin America. So some time ago, uh, some people, scientists actually, I found out who it was even, uh, took cassava cuttings, the, the, the planting material for cassava, across into Africa directly. And they started the biggest disaster we could think of because on those cuttings there were bugs, mealybugs, which people did not see. Uh, eventually, the in in insects spread across this area, which is one and a half times the United States, not even, yeah, the whole place. Um, and basically, cassava, the staple of Tonomino people, was about to disappear. So the idea was to go back and find out why is cassava growing well in, in America and, and no longer here. There must be something on this uh, uh, millibug which eats them and gets rid of the problem. So we went, looked around, found beneficial insects, released them across. Oh, sorry. Uh, we released them across uh, the uh, the continent after mass production eventually solving uh, the problem. Oops. Well, how do we get rid of this thing? Oh, okay. So producing several millions of beneficials, mostly wasps, a few ladybugs, they were basically spread out uh, across the continent uh, and um, eventually also from the ground sometimes with local people. We trained more than 12, doesn't work, huh? We trained more than 1,200 people across the continent uh, in biologically controlled uh, technologies. Uh, something like, what, 40 PhDs and 120 masters. So we actually, the, by solving a problem, we also trained a lot of people at the time. Releases were made from the ground, from the air. We developed new technologies in Africa to shoot bugs out of, uh, good bugs out of airplanes, for example. Because we didn't have time. Cassava is appearing. 20 million people were eating that three times a day. And here, this is the, the suspect, the wasp, which we found in, in uh, Paraguay, Brazil, and Bolivia, which uh, was released across the continent and basically solved the problem on its own. The other two ladybugs eventually didn't make it. So obviously, we followed up, and we saw that before release, you have these high peaks. After the release down, basically, the problem got solved um, almost overnight. We could hardly ourselves as scientists believe our eyes how fast this actually had worked. And because, oh, that was, let me go back here. This is a normal cassava plant. These are the roots which uh, people eat. And this is one which had a millibug attack. So you can see the difference is enormous. And uh, when you look at the uh, impact, okay, the cost benefit for every dollar invested on this project, 243 came out. This is unseen in the annals of international development. And actually, that project alone is responsible for 85% of the return on investment in agriculture research in Africa. One. But you can see we didn't go with fertilizer, uh, seeds, or I don't know what. We actually used nature to help us solve a problem. And we could do a whole lot more of these type of things uh, in the future. So we tried. Another problem is stem borers in maize, striga weed in, in also in, in maize or corn. And uh, again, big losses, which can be solved in a natural way. Uh, the Gates Foundation is supporting a project in Africa to actually promote hybrid maize and um, herbicide-tolerant maize. 
when it could be done different way. These are local varieties of maize. They have the characteristic of being able to respond to insect attacks by, by signaling the beneficials uh, to come to their help. Uh, Nota bene that these traits have been lost in the new varieties. And so what these plants do, so we have Desmodium here, this is a legume, feeds the soil with nitrogen, uh, removes the weeds, uh, attracts the beneficial insects, and repels the bad guys too. So by knowing what those plants actually do, uh, or can do, and rearranging the system, you can solve a problem, and we call it push-pull. A lot of information on the internet on push-pull. And that's the field which no fertilizer, not avene, cover crop, which produces nitrogen versus the normal uh, control. As I said, uh, the green effort world is knowledge intensive, so we need to find ways of better spreading knowledge. So can it be done? So we actually use models, system models, which I presented earlier, sort of connecting everything, putting numbers there. So according to what uh, Nick Stern requested to put one or two percent in the green economy, we say, all right, one tenth goes into agriculture. Then we put it into pre harvest losses, ag management, more research, food processing, all in the sense of a green agriculture, green by design, not by greenwash, not a bene. And so what happens? You can see that the production is up. This is business as usual, spending the same amount of new money into a brown agriculture. Crop. Uh, the in billion year again is up. Employment is significantly up. Uh, soil quality uh, again is up. The water use is down. Uh, the deforestation again is uh, down. And the last one, the calories are up at two and a half thousand per person. So you can see it can be done. The question is when are we going to do it? So Rio, that's now 10 years after the um, the um, original uh, order or commissioning of the Ag Assessment, the ISTAD report. So we need to bring it back and ask for accountability. We spent $12 million, the, ti the time of almost, what, 1,200 people. And um, are we going to ask a question officially, what is happening to this report? Why are the findings not implemented, which are in there, uh, which actually you play it out in a, in a, with the simulation model, can be done and gives the, resu the results you need. Thank you.